working in a tiny little book called a journal. The style of journaling I'm doing is sort of similar to what um, Dan Eldon did. And thank you. Let me get out my Dan Elden page. This is Dan Elden. That guy right there. Okay, so Dan Elden was this really cool journalist. And what he did was he was um he was raised traveling. Not like traveling to the snow area for summer vacay, but his parents helped out with a lot of different um, organizations in um, Southern Africa. And Dan Elden is from England initially. And what he did was he traveled all over Africa. Let's see, I got England. He was born in 1970. He had these little books. I had a tiny little one that I made called journals. And what he would do is he would take pictures and get like little scraps of things and he would collage them all together. Um, sort of similar to how this book is. But Dan Olden basically started it. And so on my Dan Olden page I have all I have like this little interactive flip book with, with his artwork, um, more pages from his journal, and then more pages. I did a really fun um, technique to print the images on using um, this rubber, like chemical rubbing marker thing. Oh, if I find it, I will show it to you in another video. See, I got another fun little interactive book down here with all of his artwork. And it's, it's, he, he was just phenomenal. Because he, what he did was he showed the, the real side of, of Africa, of, or at least the, um, of, or at least the Africa in the 19, 80s and the late 1970s, uh, he the, the realness that was going on, you know, kids starving and then the war and it was just chaos. And what he did was he became a journalist and he created these journals, but that was more of his own personal thing. And what he did was he would go um, into places like Somalia got it marked out right down here and he would um, you know document what was going on and in um, the early 1990s uh, Dan Eldon unfortunately passed away during one of his journaling exhibitions um, in Somalia he was journaling on how a lot of the Somalians in the area were fighting, um, I think it was like the white people who were there and, and it was just all this chaos and then he unfortunately passed away in the middle of that chaos and the, the legacy he left behind was these journals and um, my professor at my university introduced me to the whole journaling idea. At first I was a little skeptical, but let's see here, but <laughs> oh, but you gotta start somewhere. <laughs> I have, I oh got, uh, let's see, I got book one, two, um, that's zero slash three, it's another topic. And then I have, 
my little travel book would be four. This little book would be five. And then this one's, no, wait, wait. One, two, three, four, five. And then my newest one is number six. There we go. Numbers in order. <laughs> um, I miscounted because I have another little drawing journal. Um, this is travel book number one. And it has the quote from Dr. Seuss, Oh, the places you will go. And I was initially going to use this for um, a trip to Europe I was going to take with my school in the summer of 2020. But we all know how 2020 went. Yeah, anyway, so... Um, so I didn't get that opportunity, but hopefully I will be able to go on that trip. Not when they do it in 2021, because I'm going to wait until the world calms down a little, but maybe the next time when they do it in um, 2023, I would have enough money saved up and I would be more, I would be ready. So I'm holding on to that book for this. Or this book for that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, my professor, um, his name is David Modler, and he has actually created his own books on journaling. Ah, oh, I gotta get copies of those books. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, first video, nervous. <laughs> But, um, so I think I'll just gonna talk a little bit about me and work in my little, um, community journal is what I'm calling this one. Um, this is, I gotta write down, did I write down a date? I did. Okay. September 10th is when this one was started. Um, September 10th. 2019 so this book is already a year old this is one year and then let's see this one is also a, a little a little over a year this one's much more filled out but um so yeah I guess I'll just talk about me and I'll just talk about this little communal journal that I got and I have been working on. So, hello. Welcome to Multi B Studio. Um, my name is Melissa Giannotti. I know it took like eight, nine minutes into the video for me to say that, but you know, first video, only people who are gonna see this are mostly family members and friends I've kind of forced this on to. And um, so anyway, I am currently a senior in college, a super senior in college, which means that I've just done year five. Um, I did my first year at a community college for early childhood education. Um, actually, let me, let me go back, go back a little. So in high school, my junior and senior year, half the time I was at the high school and then the rest of the day I was at a tech school for early childhood education. And then I did um, ECE, or early childhood education, um, my first year of college, which I did at a community school, you know, just to try to get my foot in the door because it's already something I knew. Um, and, you know, it's, I already knew I wanted to be in that kind of a field, but it gave me kind of a chance to figure out where I wanted to go with that. And um, so after one year at the community level, I decided to go ahead and transfer a year or an, a year early to a university because most students do a two plus two. I didn't do that. I did a one plus four. <laughs> you know, just ah, just throw throw another year on. It'll be fine. But so my um, 
so after that first year at a community school, I went to a university. And, oh, well, I knew that I wanted to be a teacher. I knew that I wanted to work with students, and I knew I liked art. <laughs> so, art, art teacher. I don't know which way the video is going to be facing. My laptop's almost as old as I am. Yeah, bad joke. Got it. Um, so I am in my year five. I've just finished fall of um, 2020. Um, I would have graduated this term, but I got pushed back a little bit because of COVID. Um, I'm saying I'm a lot. <laughs> but the way that it works is um, I... <laughs> Sorry, I'm nervous. <laughs> Okay, so I took about seven classes every single term. <laughs> um, to those of you who don't know what college classes are like or have never experienced something similar to that, it's basically like two high school classes in one um, for, for standard-wise. Work-wise, the work load is smaller but it's more intense um lots of tents it's in like 10 tents <laughs> 10 tents if i know how to edit my time i need to put up this video <laughs> um, that's yeah that's how i explain how intense things are it's how many tents is it it's 10 tents it's in 10 tents <laughs> but so i basically capped out on my um my uh college credits every single term so I was used to overdoing things and you know pushing myself to keep going I'm sorry I have a cat her name is Calliope Ann call her Callie and she's playing with a tape measure on the floor that I gave her <laughs> she's really into it um so I basically took about six or seven classes every single term. So I do math, so that's essentially 14 classes every single year. Um, 14 times four, uh, okay, so I took seven classes, which is about 19 credits. And then seven classes times two terms equals 14 classes each year. Multiply that by um, four years, which is my one year community, and then my three completed years at um, my university. So that's four times four is 16. Eight, eight plus eight is 16, yeah. So that's six, one, four, fifty-six classes, um, plus the seven more that I did from this past term. Not the fall, but the spring. So that's thirteen. So that's sixty-three. Um, and then I took one class this term. Sixty-four. <laughs> 64. <laughs> Let me get this big book off my lap. And double check my math. I love, I love math, but sometimes I don't love myself. And I like to double check. Lisa calculator. Okay, so that's 14 times 4. It's 56. Um, add in the seven classes I just did, and then add the one from this term. Boom! I have taken 64 different classes, or 62 different classes um, in total. I have had to retake um, two different classes. Um, the first class was a theories class on just childhood development, and I um was not very good the first time around. 
I struggled and I had issues and I wasn't using the resources I should have and so I ended up retaking the class but I am so thankful I did because I buckled down and where's Ah, oh, and that's where book two come from. <laughs> book two come from that. <laughs> but I buckled down, and in uh, in my second black book is what I call it because they are just big black books. Zebus. Every single page is a different theorist. I got Eric Erickson, I got Maria Montessori, um, there's, um, Preformationalism, Environmentalism, like, it's just, all of them, all of the ones, even, look, look, Vygotsky and Piaget, all of them, all of them that I could possibly do, Carl Jung, Maslow, um, these ones are blank, because at one point I had them memorized and thought I wouldn't need them. Yeah, now I have to redo research to refill in those pages. The beauty of black books when you actually fill them out. But, um, so, yeah, so the first class I had to retake was just on the theories. I struggled with that. I buckled down. Now I got them all in my brain somewhere. <laughs> it normally clicks when I'm in conversation or trying to write a paper. Um, just, just free off the bat, my vocabulary is drastically different um, when it comes to school, my two jobs, and then, you know, my home life with my family. So the, the theories click in when they need to. But anyway, and then I have um, um, another class that I had to retake, which is that one <laughs> class I had to take this term. Um, what basically happened was, is in probably about March, I was experiencing a lot of family issues at home, um, and COVID hit, and all seven of my classes went online. I'm not really an online learner, I'm a physical learner, hence being an art teacher. <laughs> I'm that physical in the classroom kind of person. I, I have big black books that are just full of knowledge and then I got my little knickknacks and my sewing things and I have wood shop equipment and my welding stuff and my sewing and I'm just, I'm physical. I'm a physical learner. Um, I mostly learn by doing it Sometimes I learn by seeing it. If you just tell me it, I will remember the process, but I might forget it. So, yeah. So, um, all of the classes went online. I was having some issues at home with, um, my, uh, paternal side. And it kind of blew up in my face because... Before COVID hit, I was already starting to struggle just because I put more focus on the wrong things. Um, I've learned how to time manage better and I've learned what needs to come first when it comes to my life. Um, such as my schooling comes first before everything else. I'm almost done. I don't want to waste all this, I don't want to waste five years on doing nothing, okay? Um, so I am, yeah, I'm, I'm noticing the ums too. <sighs> but everything went online, I was having issues with family, and my priorities weren't in the right place. So one of my classes suffered, and it was unfortunately one of the ones I needed in order to student teach. But it also gave me the opportunity to redo the class in a different setting, in a different environment, with different students. Um, I have previous, previously um, um, have been <laughs> I have been um, previously placed in 
uh, high school, middle school, and elementary school settings. Um, I have taught lessons in high school and middle school settings, but I was never given that opportunity with the elementary school kids, which um, tends to be about kindergarten to second grade. Um, some schools vary, some states vary, it all depends, but in my area it's mostly just the K to second. I have not gotten a chance to teach there um, because I had to retake that class that gave me that opportunity. So now I can say I have taught um, just a little bit in every single grade. So I'm more equipped when I have to go do my student teaching in about five, six weeks. <laughs> Um, for those of you that don't know, um, in my programming, uh, student teaching is when you are a university student, whether you are an undergrad or a graduate, and you are placed into a field position, which would be in a school, depending on your major, your add-ons, your graduate level, um, tells, like, that, that, those variables play a factor in where you're placed. Um, I will be placed in a couple counties over. Not sure where yet because of COVID. Um, hopefully it will be a physical classroom because online teaching art is very, very tricky. You don't know what the students have. You. Um, you don't know what materials the students have. You don't know what they're capable of. Every child has a different disability they bring the, the, to the table. They all have different experiences, different knowledge, know-how, and it's very, it's, it's a very delicate process when you're a specials teacher, such as gym, uh, library, art, music. It's very difficult to create a lesson plan that teaches students something new when they don't have certain materials at home. Um, for example, I, in the placement that I just was in, I was in a lovely little elementary school and I got to help teach the kindergarten and second graders. And not all of them, just a few of the classes because of um, they, the goal is to try to keep the students in the classroom so that way they're not um, overexposing themselves and or the teachers. So I only had to work with about two or three classes. The, the way that I taught the online because I had to do something called a mini a TPA, and that is an education department teaching practicum acronyms. I don't remember, but um, it's essentially I had to create a three to five day lesson plan that teaches the kids some that that teaches the kids. But period. I basically had to pick and choose what to teach them, how to teach them, everything else. <laughs> so I decided to create a week's lesson plan. The issue is, is that it was the same week the kids got moved from in school to online, which on paper, it seems like that would be easier for teachers, but in actuality, it's harder because the students, again, don't have the materials. Um, um, I need like a little um count if I know how to edit that in. <laughs> so we keep track. The, the way that I did it was is that day one, I introduced the topic. Um, I introduced it with um, two YouTube videos and I had the kids go on a scavenger hunt around their house because 
I know that there are going to be things in the home that the kids can use, um, whether it's a, a pencil they find or a pen or a fork. You never know. But I had the kids go on a scavenger hunt um, for different textures. That's what we were working on. We were working on the element of art textures. Um, so day one, there were two videos. One was just explaining what textures were and one was introducing what the next day was going to be without them actually knowing. So I had them go on a scavenger hunt. They had to go find, you know, um, four or five different textures around the house and, you know, just take a picture of it. They didn't have to do it. I worded it to where, you know, you can try this out if you would like to because, again, um, the student's environment may be different than others. You know, the babysitter doesn't have time, grandmother doesn't, like, understand the iPads, the kids get frustrated easily and don't have a way to calm down like they might have at school. Um, so I, I did that and then the next day I made my own video and I, I taught them um, in the video how to create yeah, uh, texture rubbing, which is when you take a naked crayon, and no, those aren't the crayons you find on the beaches. <laughs> it's, um, I have a little crayon right here. A little, little crayon. But it's just a crayon that you just take the wrapper off of, and then you rub it side to side to try to get that image. Um, a lot of historians will do this when it comes to uh, old architectures with um, writing that they can't read anymore because of how worn down the stone is. So they would take their piece of paper and they would most likely take charcoal and then rub it side to side to try to get that image transfer. So I taught the, I taught the kids in the video how to do a texture rubbing and I told them if you want to try this, go for it. And I told them, you know, try to find a couple different textures and you know try to do the rubbings and I also explained to them how you know some textures would be the same um, some things may be harder to do than others like soft things won't show up as well as rough or um, bumpy textures and so that's that's another day I know that not every student is gonna have these materials but I do know that the teachers gave the kids um, utility boxes, which are their pencil boxes, which have crayons in it. So hopefully the kids will have rubbing crayons they can use, and hopefully they'll have a piece of paper to try it on, whether that's notebook paper or printer paper. Um, the third day I did implied textures, which are textures you normally find in um, images and drawings that it doesn't have the physical feel of it, but it looks like it would. I think where, oh where did my Van Gogh go? That's not my Van Gogh. Or it was at one point. I don't know what happened to it. I don't know. Let's see if I can find any in my mini book. Some fun implied textures. Those are physical textures. Oh, oh. Ooh, ooh. oh, I saw one. I saw one I liked. There's a, a lot. There we go. There we go. This is a fun um, 4th of July page. I, or, yeah, 4th of July page I made back um, in 2019. This is just pen and watercolor. But some fun implied texture would be the trees, the grass strokes, her hair, 
you know, it looks like it'll be very wavy and movy. The trees look like they'd be prickly. The grass looks like it'd be nice and soft to lay on. You know, just um, textures that you can see but you can't feel. And I explained to them that. I drew them um, their own little, you know, example sheet from a top-down perspective. My co-teacher helped me with that. <laughs> It was really interesting making it because she had her foot up on the chair and <laughs> they're on the table and it's just came right down it's like oh okay please don't fall <laughs> and then on the um oh god and then and then I asked the students I showed them how to split one paper into four parts and then I gave them the examples and then I asked them to go ahead and draw some implied textures or some objects with implied textures. Like french fries. They got some salt on it. You know, like bricks on a wall. That's gonna look some bumpy. <laughs> Meme right there. Oh, okay, and then let's see here. And then Tuesday and then Thursday and Friday are a combined day to where the students had to and or tried to draw a flower using the techniques they learned using you know implied texture using uh, texture rubbings you know using the stuff they used in the classroom but it's it's very delicate very delicate process because what I initially wanted to do I initially wanted to do um, you can see the outside world Anyway, sorry, I get distracted. <laughs> but I initially wanted to do these really big, um, uh, leaf rubbings to make trees. So that way the classrooms that I was using would have, like, these fun trees to put up in the hallway. And then they all went online and I had to modify absolutely everything I planned. <laughs> but the fun part is, the concept stayed the same. So, I start my student teaching in January. I'm not sure where I'm going to be placed, but I have to take into account stuff like that. Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> video one loses train of thought at 33 minutes. Oh, stars. <sighs> but, um, I... Um, all about me. All about me, Hour. Oh! I have been thinking about doing all this with my media. Actually restarting my art stuff. Um, it was initially called uh, Giannotti's Crafts and Creations. But that's a really long name. And nobody can spell my last name. And it sounds like a pizzeria, you know, Ginatis. So, I would put it down, but I have plants in the windowsill. And they like seeing the outside. But, um, so I changed it to Multi B Studio because my name is Melissa, which is Greek for B, um, which is really cool. Since I do have some, you know, Greek DNA floating around. So, yeah, my first name is Greek for honeybee. And, um, I am multimedia artist. You know, I, uh, let's see, my primary stuff, um, let's see, I paint, I draw, um, be more specific. Uh, I do acrylic paint and watercolors. I do charcoal and um, graphite drawings. I work with um, sewing. I'm currently sewing aprons for Christmas. Yay! Um, first time I've sewn in a hot minute. And I am an amateur clay worker. I know how to work with um, metal I've cast ironed before. I have um, my own welding gloves and welding helmet. 
So if I had a project to propose, I could always go to my university and be like, hey, can I come hang out for the day? And they'll be like, yeah, come on. But it's COVID season, so I gotta hold off on that. Sorry, I'm not a seat person. And sit for 35, 32, the clock. What do you say? Um, so yeah, I'm very handsy. I'm a very handsy artist. Not in the Salvador Dali way, but in the, um... Oh my stars, what is her name? In the Martha Stewart way. In the Martha Stewart way, because I sew, I cook, I weld. Um, I've been primarily been sewing, watercoloring, and sketching at the moment. Lots of sketching. Because I have been working in this little traveling journal, which I've mentioned like a, a jillion times. But, um, so yeah, a journal is anything and absolutely everything. Um, personal ones anyway. So I have a diary and or I used to. I still write in it from time to time. But the journals have kind of taken over my life. Um, this one is number five, which is probably one of my favorites just because of the size of it. It's a square! <laughs> I was telling my professor how I really wanted to do something different. He's like, hey, it's a square. And I'm like, oh, it's a square. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I have stickers on it. I got stickers of my job. I have stickers from oh my stars. I different artists. There we go. I have my like, little fortune cookie taped on there. I got a minion or so. You know, it's just it just, you know, me. It's just me. And the best part is it's all about you. Everybody takes the, the journaling approach differently. You know, um, I need to find a different spot for that. You know, some of, you know, my classmates just take a black and white approach where they just use the pen in the traditional sense, and then they, they have their doodles, and, well, I'll probably talk about doodles in a different video. And then I take mine in a very hands-on approach, such as, you know, there's a little miniature journal of Dan Eldon's you can flip through, and then you can just, like, this is um, construction paper, like, with this 3D thing that I drew and cut out and glued, and, you know, there's this little, um, which project was this one? Oh, this little, um, collage thing that I got in my artist trading cards, and it's, it's a very, it's a hands-on book. I'm a tactile learner, I like my things, so I'm, I'm gonna want my book touchy. I love artwork that's very interactive. I'm not producing interactive work, but I would like to one day. I have built um, some furniture, such as my TV stand and then my blanket chest, but you know, I really do want to be more of a physical learner. I mean, physical, manipulative, lots of kinetic art. I'd love to work with kinetic art. See, like these, these are I love how bright it is so you can't see what's written, which is kind of good because they're phone numbers. But you know, it's it's just, it's a physical thing. And I, me being the amazing friend that I am, introduced this idea to some of my friends that I play Dungeons and Dragons with and do schoolwork with. And so, um, one of the projects I got from my professor 
was we all got like these little black books and we were supposed to you know um trade them with somebody else you know like every other week that didn't happen so i used my black book and i have been passing it back and forth every week with one of my friends and we're doing a fun little rotation and um this is this project has been going on for the book itself has been around for about a year and um, the project I'm currently working on with my friends has been around only for about two months and you know Alice in Wonderland stuff and there's oh that's elvish and that's all hand stitched embroidery and it's just you know, it was really just a way for me to help kickstart their creativity. They, um, sometimes we get lost in the day-to-day -day stuff, and it takes the little things to kind of bring it out. This is one of mine. It says believe and hope in the eyes. But it, um, some, sometimes we need the little stuff to help us out. And I watched a YouTube channel called Innis Honest that was created by, um, Mark, uh, Fishbach, which, aka Markiplier, and then Ethan Nestor, which is aka Crank Gameplays. And they created this channel and lasted a year. I was there since the beginning, every day, for an entire year, watching the videos, rewatching the videos. And I was there until the end. I watched the live stream of the last video which was 12 hours long and to me um, that's one shift at one of my jobs so I thought I could do it and I did I didn't know if I could do it emotionally though because this was such a big part of my life for an entire year like since before COVID hit it's it's like the channel started a couple months roll by COVID hits they still keep going and the channel was all about how you know nothing lasts we're all gonna die, nothing matters, it's just all about what you do with the time you have. And just because I keep like moving. Um, and I, I watched until the end. I was there and it didn't really hit me that it was over until the live stream ended and then the next video queued up started to play and it was one of the Nasana's videos specifically when they were um, going to go buy a casket and the best part was is that it started uh, already like one third of the way through the video so it skipped the initial time countdown and it was just there I recorded myself explaining what was going on on how you know Unisanas had just deleted the channel they deleted all of and or locked their social media and it 
it, it hit hard knowing that that would be the last time I would get the opportunity to see one of the videos in full but it felt wrong it felt wrong to do that because it's like when somebody passes away it's like trying to bring them back and you you can't do that you're just left with the, the things they leave behind the memories and experiences their legacy those are the things you should hold on to the experiences the, the stories not not them itself because you can't hold on to a ghost forever it's just gonna hurt you and it hit me and I decided to refresh my YouTube page and it was gone The videos that are normally on the do you want to continue watching this or <laughs> thinking about it now all the um the videos that I liked from the past year they're gone so there is just an empty space in my watch history just a large empty space and I can't fill that it's going to be there. I can't fix it. I can't change it. I just accept it. You know, at first it was hard because it had just happened and I felt very encouraged. Very... cared for in a way because they had warned us, they had told us, and I felt very inspired. You know, I'm going through a lot, um, mentally, emotionally, physically, <laughs> physically, <laughs> and um, that channel, what those two created was was a very somber thing. It was their child that was basically my best friend and a lot of other people's best friends. And it's gone. You can't get it back. You can't change it. You can only move on. And they have really inspired me to follow through with my plans, follow through with my projects, and do what I want to do with my time. Because none of us know how much is left. The clock is always ticking, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. But there is something we can do with it which I think is a really great idea. It's, it's been like 49 minutes and I don't know how to edit videos. So this is just going to be a really long ass first video for my language. But um So this channel can say that it was definitely inspired by Unisanus and Moldy Bee Studio, which is the name of my art stuff, can definitely say that it was inspired by Unisanus. Just doing what makes you happy. And I think what makes you happy right now is me not having such a long video 
for the first one. But well, you're gonna have to deal with it. Because <laughs> I'm not editing it. I'm not changing it. Because I can't edit very well. And or at all. And, um, as time goes on, I hope I can inspire you with one of the hobbies that I share or one of the art techniques that I introduce. I hope that I could be someone that kind of kicks you in the rear a bit, gets you interested in something. I know times are tough. And I don't know if they're going to get better yet. But at least I found an outlet. And I hope you can find one too. So, on that note, I'm going to end the video. Because I don't know how to end videos. <laughs> and I'm just going to say, I'll see y'all later. <laughs> Bye.